Colgate Dental Cream to clean your breath while you clean your teeth and help stop tooth decay, and Luster Cream Shampoo for soft, glamorous, caressable hair bring you Our Miss Brooks, starring Eve Arden. It's time once again for another comedy episode of Our Miss Brooks, written by Al Lewis. Well, most of us have our good days and our bad days. And our Miss Brooks, who teaches English at Madison High School, is no exception to this rule. They say there are days when it doesn't pay you to get out of bed. Well, last Friday, when my rent was due, was just such a day for my landlady, Mrs. Davis. I brought the subject up as soon as we had started to eat breakfast. I'm terribly sorry, Mrs. Davis, but I'm afraid I have some bad news for you. It's about the rent. You mean last month's rent? You haven't got it yet? I mean, this month's rent, I haven't got it again. (laughs) Well, don't worry about it, dear. How does that old joke go again? There's no sense in both of us worrying. (laughs) (laughs) What am I laughing about? I'm broker than you are. (laughs) Maybe so, Mrs. Davis, but you don't owe you as much as I do. But all hope isn't lost, though. I found out this week that I still have a chance to become head of Madison's English department. Really? Yes. In fact, I'm supposed to have a meeting with Mr. Stone of the Board of Education this morning. Where, Connie? In the office of our beloved principal, Mr. Conklin. I see. Do you think Mr. Conklin will put in a word for you? That's why I want to get there early. I think I know the word. <laughs> Actually, though, I'm, I'm not too worried about Mr. Conklin's attitude toward my teaching ability. Is it up to Mr. Stone to make the recommendation for Madison's new head of the English department? Yes, it is. And I understand that he won't recommend any promotions without a personal interview. That's why I asked Walter Denton to pick me up a little earlier this morning. He'll be here, Connie. And I know you'll get the position. I hope so, Mrs. Davis. You see, it isn't just the honor involved. It's the cash. The promotion carries a raise with it. Just think, I'll be able to pay you back the rent I owe, buy some new clothes, do my Christmas shopping, pick up a new winter coat, maybe even put a down payment on a car. Oh, that's wonderful, Connie. How much of a raise goes with this job? Two dollars a month. (laughs) Or maybe it's two dollars a week. Come to think of it, I might have to wait a while for the car. (laughs) Well, I'm very excited for you, Connie. I only wish we could celebrate with a little more luxurious breakfast. Toast and marmalade isn't very gala. Oh, I don't know. And there's not much of that, I'm sorry to say. I tried to call the market this morning, but our party line was in use. In fact, it's almost always in use. Yes, I know. It's Every time some I... woman named Grace, and <laughs> she's always talking to a friend of hers named Bertha. It's so frustrating sometimes when you want to make a call, and every time you pick up the phone, someone's talking. I know. I and try to get in <laughs> The things they were talking about were of any importance. They just go on and on and on and on. Mrs. Davis, they I They never really... give anybody a chance <laughs> You'd think they'd get the idea, though, after hearing my receiver click a few times. Mrs. Davis, I would like to say... no, (laughs) no. They just go on chattering about nothing. Yuckata, yuckata, (laughs) yuckata. Honestly, sometimes I could Mrs. Davis. Yes, Connie? Deposit five cents for another three minutes, please. (laughs) Oh, I'm sorry, dear. I guess I got carried away. (laughs) Have some more coffee. Thanks, I will. Here's my cup. I wonder what's keeping Walter Denton. My interview with Mr. Stone's at 9 sharp. Well, it isn't 8.30 yet, Connie. But if it'll make you feel any better, why don't you give Walter a ring? Good idea. Excuse me. Believe me, Bertha, I'm not petty. But when Elsie pulled that stuff on me about the tickets, I just had to open up my yap and let her have it. It's the party line again. Wouldn't you know it? Just when I have to make a quick call. I'll count ten and try again. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Eleven, twelve, even fifteen dollars would be all right. (laughs) Where did she come off with that twenty bucks a couple baloney? Oh, this is awful. Now, take it easy, Connie. I'm sure Walter will get you to school in plenty of time for your appointment. Now, I'm going to wash the dishes, dear. Why don't you put your hat and coat on and be all ready to leave? All right, Mrs. Davis, but first I'm going to try this phone once more. 
So I told her, Bertha. Listen, Elsie, I said, it isn't like Gus and I don't want to do our full share, I said. We know this is a benefit performance and that it's a good cause, but we weren't born yesterday, I told her. One, two, three, four. <laughs> I can't understand why Walter Denton isn't here yet, Connie. It's almost ten minutes to nine. Too late to take a bus. It was too late to take the bus half an hour ago. I'd take a cab if I had the money, or if you had the money. Have you, Mrs. Davis? Don't bother answering. I can tell by your face. <laughs> of course, it only takes ten minutes to drive to school the way Walter drives, but if he doesn't show up within a minute or two, I'd better call Mr. Conklin and tell him I'll be a little late. Then when I'm all ready to forgive and forget, Bertha, what do you think Elsie has the nerve to say to me? Will you please stop talking for just a minute? Exactly, Bertha. Will you please... <laughs> please stop talking for just a minute, she says. Will you answer the front door, Connie? I'm stacking the dishes. All right, Mrs. Davis. Hang on a minute, will you, Bertha? I think I hear my doorbell ringing. Oh. It's not your doorbell that's ringing. It's... Oh, what's the use? Well, it's about time. Oh, it's Harriet Conklin. Come in, Harriet. Thanks, Miss Brooks. What are you doing at home, Miss Brooks? You should be on your way to school by now. So should you, Harriet. I know it, but Daddy left the house early this morning and asked me to be sure and see that you got to school on time. So I called Walter Denton, and he said he'd pick me up on his way over to school to pick you up. But then he called back and said his car had broken down, and he had to walk to school, and when he tried to phone you, all he kept getting was a busy signal. So I took the bus over here to tell you, and now we're both going to be late, and Daddy will have our scalp because Mr. Stone is waiting to see you, too. If that sentence doesn't win this year's Nobel Prize for Literature, you've been cheated. <laughs> Please, Miss Brooks, you've got to call Daddy right away. I've tried to, Harriet, but we've got a party line and their phone's been in use all morning. That's why Walter got a busy signal when he called. But I'll give it another whirl. So we took the tickets, Bertha. After all, why be small for the sake of a few dollars? If Elsie wants to be that way, that's her business. Grace Gibble is different. Even if this weren't raffling off at you, Hudson, I'd rather be open and above board than do anything else. Except talk. Oh, hang on a few minutes, will you, Bertha? I have to put up my pot roast now. Gus likes it at least once a week. Tonight's the night. Hang on. Just a minute. Please don't go away. I... Who's going away? I'll just sit and drink a Coke till you get the meat on, Grace. <laughs> Fine, honey. This way we'll keep the connection open between us. I'm on a party line, you know. And boy, can those people who share this phone with us shoot the breeze. I'll just be a gif, dear. Okay, girl. Uh, oh, say, before you go, I'll give you a little tip. Have you got any bay leaves home? Yeah. You got a lot of bay leaves home? Yeah. Well, stick them in your mouth and jump in the stove with the pot roast. <laughs> It's me, Mr. Conklin, Miss Brooks. Well, nice of you to drop in on us, Miss Brooks. Just happened to be in the neighborhood, did you? I know I'm late, Mr. Conklin, you but I... You had a nine o'clock appointment in this office with Mr. Stone. Do you know what time it is now, Miss Brooks? After 9.30? Yes, it is after 9.30. It's 10.40! <laughs> Please, Mr. Conklin... I can explain if you'll just let me. It's too I... late for explanations. Mr. Stone has left. But he'll be back, won't he? He hasn't decided on anyone else. Fortunately for you, Miss Brooks, Mr. Stone happens to be an extremely fair-minded individual. He's leaving for the state capitol at 7 o'clock this evening, but has promised to call you on the phone between 6 and 6.30. On the phone? Yes. <laughs> Confidentially, Miss Brooks, in spite of the steady stream of irritants with which you pepper my otherwise prosaic life, my integrity forced me to recommend you rather highly for this position. Oh, thank you, Mr. Conklin. I now, do Now, the important thing to Mr. Stone is the availability and cooperative spirit of the person he chooses. That is, if you're going to be head of a department, you'll probably want to know how accessible you can make yourself to the other teachers. He ought to talk to Mr. Boynton. I mean, uh... <laughs> It's, it's very nice of you to tell me all this, Mr. Conklin, but if my getting this job depends on Mr. Stone reaching me on the phone tonight, I'm afraid I'm still out of the running. What do you mean? I'm on a party line that won't quit. 
They're constantly using the phone. He'll never get through to me. Then have your party line changed. Call the telephone company and tell them you want a different party line. What a wonderful suggestion, Mr. Conklin. I'll do it right after my last morning class. I'll call the phone company and ask for a new party line and a long cord. A long cord? What for? That's so if they don't give me the new party line, I can hang Grace and Bertha. <laughs> Our Miss Brooks, starring Eve Arden, will continue in just a moment. But first, here is Vern Smith. Now, proof that brushing teeth right after eating with Colgate Dental Cream helps stop tooth decay before it starts. Continuous research, hundreds of case histories, makes this the most conclusive proof in all dentifrice research on tooth decay. Eminent dental authorities supervised hundreds of college men and women for over two years. One group always brushed their teeth with Colgate right after eating. The other followed their usual dental care. The group using Colgate Dental Cream as directed, using Colgate's exclusively, showed a startling reduction in average number of cavities, far less tooth decay. The other group developed new cavities at a much higher rate. No other dentifrice offers proof of these results. Modern research indicates decay is caused by mouth acids, which are at their worst right after eating. Brushing teeth with Colgate's as directed helps remove acids before they harm enamel. Yes, Colgate's contains all the necessary ingredients, including an exclusive patented ingredient for effective daily dental care. So remember, always use Colgate Dental Cream to clean your breath while you clean your teeth and help stop tooth decay. Well, when lunchtime rolled around, I called the telephone company and was quite chagrined to learn that they couldn't possibly change my party line by the same evening. So I determined to put into effect Plan X, which decoded meant Operation I'll Face the People and Ask Them to Keep Off the Line from 6 to 6.30. I told Walter Denton about my scheme when I ran into him in the school cafeteria. I can't tell you all the details, Walter, but it's absolutely essential that my phone is clear this evening. And there's only one way I can accomplish it. Will you help me? Now, as always, Miss Brooks, my sword, my heart, and my life are dedicated to your service. <laughs> Thanks, Walter. Now, pick up your jacket. I can step over that puddle of chicken broth. <laughs> Sit down here a minute, Walter, and I'll tell you what I'd like you to do for me. Okay, Miss Brooks. First of all, I looked up the address of my party line play my playmate, Grace Gribble, and I found out that it's quite a distance from my place. Hence, I'd appreciate a lift. Well, I'd be happy to supply the lift, Miss Brooks, but alas, my chariot is at present reposing endurance vile. Endurance vile? I loused up the carburetor. <laughs> I mean, the car's being repaired, Miss Brooks, and that's why I couldn't get you this morning. I hope you've forgiven me for that unseeming lapse. What did you have for lunch today, a Shakespeare burger? <laughs> Look, Walter, what's wrong with the car? Well, I broke a little wire that's attached to the carburetor. Well, it shouldn't take too long to have another wire put in. Well, no, but when the wire broke, it got tangled up in the fan belt and ripped it to pieces. And then all you need is a new wire and a fan belt. Not exactly. You see, when the fan belt hit the fan, it flew out of its socket. Then you need a new fan, too. Then when the fan flew into the radiator, the water <laughs> poured into the distributor and ruined it and the spark plugs. So all we need is a new fan belt, fan, radiator, distributor, and spark plugs. And a new sign by the trolley tracks around the corner. <laughs> a new sign? That's what I smacked into when I busted that little wire. <laughs> I promised the officer I'd replace the sign. What did the sign say, Walter? Safety zone. <laughs> if I knew jujitsu, you'd be lying across that steam table by now. Look, I've got to get out to 145 Collier Drive today, Walter. That's where the Gribbles live. Have you any suggestions? Oh, sure. Now, I happen to know that Mr. Boynton just got his car all fixed up. I was in the repair shop when he paid his bill. Mr. Boynton? That's right. So oh, why don't you ask him to drive you this afternoon? This way, you will not only get to your destination promptly, but both you and Mr. Boynton will be in the company of people who obviously mean much more to each other than shows on the surface so far. Kill me, I love this type of boy. <laughs> Oh, 
Come in. Well, it's Miss Brooks. Come in. Thanks, Mr. Boynton. I'm glad I caught you before you left for the day. Oh, I was just tidying up the lab a bit. I've had quite a job cleaning my Bunsen burner. Oh, dirty flame? <laughs> Something seems to be stuck here. I... There, there, it's out. Now, now, what can I do for you, Miss Brooks? You can drive me out to Collier Avenue, Mr. Boynton, if you've got the time. You see, I'm expecting an important call from Mr. Stone around 6 this evening, and I've got to talk to the people who share the party line on my telephone. Oh, do you know them, Miss Brooks? Not personally, but they use the phone almost incessantly, and Mr. Stone wants to talk to me about my qualifications to head the English department. I just want to ask them to leave it free between 6 and 6.30. Oh, I see. Well, I'd certainly like to help you out, Miss Brooks, but frankly, I'm on a budget. I don't want you to buy me these people. <laughs> I just want a lift to their house. Uh, you don't understand. Collier Avenue is quite a way out, and I've had to limit my gas consumption. As I told you last night on the phone, if we go for a ride tonight through mm. the park, I won't be able to use the car again until Monday. But this is very important, Mr. Boynton. I just... So is self-discipline, Miss Brooks. It isn't just the money involved. Although I find by purchasing only three gallons a week instead of four, I save 83 cents a month. <laughs> Which... <laughs> When you add it up, in, in a few years, it comes to a pretty penny. Believe me, Mr. Boynton, saving a pretty penny may be fun, but you can also get a kick out of spending an occasional ugly quarter. <laughs> if it's just a question of gas rationing, suppose I replace whatever gas is used up. Please, Miss Brooks, are you suggesting that I take money from a woman? No, gas. <laughs> No, no, it's out of the question. All right, then I'll let you pay for it. Well, that's not the solution either. It, it's a matter of principle with me. If I throw my budget out the window this time, I'll be tempted to do it again. A thing like that can become habit-forming. Don't you see, Miss Brooks, spending money is a disease. Well, don't make out your will yet. You'll never catch it. <laughs> oh, gee, Miss Brooks, you, you make me feel as if you think I'm cheap. Oh, not at all, Mr. Boynton. You're a very ready man with a budget. But don't worry about it. I'll get out there some way. I've still got my good right thumb and a pair of uncomfortable old shoes on my aching feet. <laughs> Miss Brooks. Yes, Mr. Boynton? I've just been stalling. I'm flat broke. Welcome aboard. <laughs> you see, the truth of the matter is I spent my last six dollars getting the car repaired and I just haven't enough money to, to put any gas in this afternoon. But I'll tell you what, I'll borrow a couple of dollars from one of the other teachers. Now, don't you worry, I'll get you out there some way. If I've said it once, I've heard it a thousand times. There's no sense in both of us worrying. <laughs> well, here we are, Miss Brooks, 145 Collier Avenue. If you don't mind, I'll wait out here in the car while you talk to the Gribbles. All right, Mr. Boynton, I'll just be a few minutes. Yeah, come on. Oh, yes, ma'am. Mr. Gribble? Yes, ma'am? I'm Miss Brooks. I share the party line on your telephone with you. There's something I'd like to speak to you and Mrs. Gribble about. Oh, well, come in, Miss Brooks. <laughs> Sit right down here in the living room. Thank you. My wife will be out in a minute. She's on the telephone. <laughs> Naturally. I beg your pardon? Nothing, Mr. Gribble. You see, the reason I dropped over is to ask a little favor. I've always tried to be a good party line neighbor. Oh, so have we, Miss Brooks. I don't see any reason why people on a party line should get into hassles, do you? Well, I it... believe if you just respect one another's privacy, everything will work out fine. Well, the minute we pick up the receiver, if we hear another voice, or somebody dialing, we hang right up. That's fine, Mr. Gribble. So do I, but <laughs> Mrs. Gribble is on the phone quite a bit, and tonight I'm expecting a terribly important call between 6 and 6.30, and I wonder if you could sort of keep off your phone until I've talked to my party. Oh, I don't see why we can't work something out. I'll talk to Grace about it right now. Pardon me just one minute. <laughs> You know how Elsie is, Bertha. Some people you just can't reason hey, with. Hey, Grace, Grace, come here, man. I'm talking, Gus. I told Elsie, let sleeping dogs lay there, why don't you? But do you think she'd listen? Hey, Grace, we got company. Tell Bertha you'll talk to her later company? on. Company? Listen, Bertha, hang on, will you? I'll be back in a couple of minutes. <laughs> who is it, Gus? It's the young lady who shares our party line, Grace. Come on in, I'll introduce you. Miss Brooks? 
This is my wife, Grace. How do you do? How do, Miss Brooks? I'm sorry if I disturbed your conversation. Oh, but that's I... all right. Bertha don't mind hanging on. She waits for a half hour sometimes. She's very loyal that way. <laughs> Miss Brooks uh, wants to ask a favor, Grace, about the telephone. Oh, what is it? Well, I'm expecting a terribly important call tonight, Mrs. Gribble, between 6 and 6.30. From Mr. Boynton? Mr. Boynton? <laughs> <laughs> Why, no, but how, how did you... You and that Boynton. He ain't got much get up and go in him, has he? <laughs> well, please, Mrs. Gribble, You're I... You're set for your ride around the park tonight? <laughs> <laughs> the park? Well, how did you know Last that... Last week it was the zoo. This week it's the park. Doesn't he ever take you any place that costs money? Listen, Mrs. Gribble, Mr. Boynton isn't cheap. It's just that he's a school teacher too, and, well, we enjoy going to the places we go to when we go to them. <laughs> English teachers should talk better. <laughs> Leave her alone, Gus. She's a little excited. Listen, Miss Brooks, I think you're a very considerate person. Believe me, when you offered to chip in for the movies last Wednesday night, when Boynton said he was a little short, it was very touching. <laughs> I was so thrilled I almost hung up. <laughs> and I thought I was living alone well, That reminds me, how's Mrs. Davis? Mrs. Davis? That's some doctor she has When she called him up with that sore throat last Monday It didn't take 20 minutes and he was phoning his exchange from your place I haven't seen Mrs. Davis since this morning, Mrs. Gribble Tell me, how is she feeling today? <laughs> oh, she's 100% better Good <laughs> Now, about the phone, I would like oh, to yeah, ask you... Oh, yeah, the phone Oh, I'd better get back to Bertha I want to tell her how good my pot roast turned out She was kidding me about it this morning Stick the bay leaves in my mouth, she says <laughs> Try it again, Miss Brooks But, Mrs. Gribble, about tonight... Mr. Gribble, I've just got to have a clear line on my phone this evening Well, let's be honest, Miss Brooks If you want a clear line on your phone ever You better get another party to share it with But I tried, Mr. Gribble The phone company said they can't do anything about it right now You didn't speak to the right people My brother Bill works for the phone company Bill Gribble Yeah, talk to him Tell him I sent you And you'll get a new party line in a minute Really, Mr. Gribble? Sure Well, that's wonderful but before I go, there's something else I'd like to ask you. Yes, ma'am? If you have a brother working at the telephone company, why can't you wangle yourself a private line? Well, confidentially, we like it better this way. <laughs> Man, a party line's a great relaxation. You see, Miss Brooks, we haven't got a television set. <laughs> <laughs> but, Mr. Gribble, you said you believe in respecting people's privacy. Well, I do. Did you ever hear me join one of your personal conversations? <laughs> what time is it now, Mrs. Davis? 7.15, Connie. I can't understand why Mr. Stone didn't call. Did the phone company change your party line? Yes, from Madison 4587 to Madison 6319. Without Grace Gribble, it couldn't possibly have been busy from 6 to 6.30 inclusive. Maybe Mr. Conklin heard from Mr. Stone. I'll give him a ring. So I looked out the window, and there was this Mr. Boynton in the car. Bertha, he's a dream. Mrs. Gribble, what are you doing on this line? Oh, hello, Miss Brooks. The phone company told me I'd be sharing the line with a new number, Madison 6319. Madison 6319? Well, isn't that nice? That's Bertha's number. <laughs> oh, great. This is just dandy. What's dandy, Connie? Instead of having Grace, who's always talking to Bertha, I now have Bertha, who's always talking to Grace. <laughs> Eve Arden as our Miss Brooks returns in just a moment, but first... Dream girl, dream girl, beautiful luster cream girl. Tonight? Yes, tonight. Show him how much lovelier your hair can look after a luster cream shampoo. Luster cream, world's finest shampoo. No other shampoo in the world gives K. Dumas magic blend of secret ingredients plus gentle lanolin. 
Not a soap, not a liquid. Luster Cream Shampoo leaves hair three ways lovelier. Fragrantly clean, free of loose dandruff, glistening with sheen, soft, manageable. Even in hardest water, Luster Cream lathers instantly. No special rinse needed after a Luster Cream Shampoo. So gentle, Luster Cream is wonderful even for children's hair. Tonight, yes, tonight, try Luster Cream Shampoo. Dream girl, dream girl, beautiful luster cream girl, you owe your crowning glory to a luster cream shampoo. And now, once again, here is our Miss Brooks. Well, I was feeling pretty low about missing Mr. Stone's call, and I told Mr. Boynton as much when he phoned me at 8 o'clock. Well, don't worry about it, Miss Brooks. I'm sure Mr. Stone will be back in town soon, and you can have your interview with him then. Now, suppose you cheer up, and we'll go to a movie. Oh, I don't know. Oh, I... come on, Miss Brooks. I borrowed enough to show us a real nice time. But I don't really feel like a movie. Please, Miss Brooks. Come on, Miss Brooks. Say yes. <laughs> <laughs> Who was that? That's my party line neighbor, Bertha. Bertha, Mr. Boynton. Mr. Boynton, Bertha. Uh, how do you do? Talk more, Mr. Boynton. I'm crazy about your voice. <laughs> I, I don't understand. Who is this? This, Mr. Boynton, is Madison 6319. That's right, Mr. Boynton. What's your number? <laughs> He's a restricted number. We don't give him out. Now, <clears throat> about that movie, Mr. Boynton, on second thought, I'll be happy to go with you. So Please, Bertha, hang up. What movie did you have in mind, Mr. Boynton? Well, any number can play. So why can't I go along? <laughs> Sorry, Bertha. Any number can play is only on the screen. In the balcony, it's strictly one to a customer. Next week, tune into another Our Miss Brooks show brought to you by Luster Cream Shampoo for soft, glamorous, caressable hair and Colgate Dental Cream to clean your breath while you clean your teeth and help stop tooth decay. Our Miss Brooks, starring Eve Arden, is produced by Larry Burns, directed by Al Lewis, with music by Wilbur Hatch. Mr. Boynton is played by Jeff Chandler, Mr. Conklin by Gail Gordon. Others in tonight's cast were Jane Morgan, Dick Crenna, Gloria McMillan, Joseph Kearns, Lucille Meredith, and Sandra Gould. Men, here is actual factual proof of more comfortable, actually smoother shaves by using Palm Olive Lather Shaving Cream. 1,251 men tried the Palm Olive Lather way to shave described on the tube. And no matter how they shaved before, three out of four got more comfortable, actually smoother shaves. Try Palm Olive Lather Shaving Cream. See if you don't get more comfortable, actually smoother shaves the Palm Olive Lather Shaving Cream way. <laughs> Most of our schools remain understaffed, overcrowded, handicapped by buildings and equipment of inferior quality. And all of these conditions undermine the morale of teachers, teachers in whose keeping rests the future of the rising generations of American citizens. There's a continuing shortage of teachers themselves, reflecting the fact that educational crisis is still with us. You can help by taking an active part yourself in parent-teachers organizations and local educational groups. Remember, our teachers mold our nation's future, and in that future, you have a vital stake. For mystery liberally sprinkled with laughs, listen to Mr. and Mrs. North Tuesday evening over most of these same stations. And be with us again next week at the same time for another comedy episode of Our Miss Brooks. Bob Lamont speaking. This is CBS for Columbia Broadcasting System.